written on any statement signed by me. Somebody must have given you a bum steer. Where do you get your information? You all right, Trevor? You look a bit crook. Yes. Yeah, well, uh, you better get yourself a new informant, Frank, because everybody knows I'm a legitimate businessman now. Get out of here. Come on, Frank. Oh, yeah, I'm going. A man can only take so much bullshit in one night. Which you away. It's a promise. Not a reprieve for Terry Madigan. And justice has seemed to be done. Here. Check the bow, I'll check down here. Bit of a party going on. Gavin? You're right, sir, it's the police here. I'll just <clears throat> untie your legs if you just st stop struggling. Do you want this? Got it. It's okay, sir, it's the police. We're just gonna untie your legs and then. Got it? Yep. Okay, right. round you go. There you go, mate. There you go. Okay, I'll just get this. I'll get it off. That's it. You right? It's the district court judge. Yeah. Get me off this boat. We'll get you an ambulance if you like, if you're feeling okay. Okay, hospital. All right. Do you want me to put this over here?
Uh, Detective Frank Holloway, this is Judge Charles Morton. Just watch yourself. Hey, Judge. It appears you have a bit of explaining to do. The matter of a stolen cruiser? What? Yeah, it was reported uh, stolen from Rush Cutters Bay Marina this morning, sir. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, you are going to have to tell us exactly what happened, Judge. I'm sorry. I do not want to pursue the matter. Uh, I'm afraid it's not quite that simple now, sir. I know what'll happen to me if this gets out. Yeah, well, uh, wouldn't do your credibility any good. Sylvia, my wife, we've been married 25 years. We have two children. A position, a reputation. Well, we understand that, but the trouble for us is that uh, the cruiser's been reported stolen. That means we have to pursue the matter. And, um, well, if you can't tell us why you're on board. But on the other hand, if you can prove you had nothing to do with the theft, well, we can drop the matter. So, I mean, uh, keeping quiet either way is not going to help, sir. Uh, Gavin, could you take the judge upstairs, see if we've got some clothes that he can put on? Not a problem. This way, sir. Nice little cocktail frock might be nice for those stockings. Off the shoulder number? Mm-hmm. Okay, was there anyone else on the cruiser with you? A woman named Susie. Right, know her last name? No. Address? No. What's your relationship to her? We met on a semi-regular basis for sex. How regular, semi-regular? About eight or nine times in the past three months. Right, where'd you board the cruiser? Susie picked me up at Darling Street Wharf, Balmain. What, by herself? No one else on board? That's right. Who owns the boat? I don't know, and I don't particularly care who owns it. Right, well, what happened when you got on board? I don't really know. <clears throat> I must have passed out, and when I woke up, I was alone and had been tied up. I think you're going to have to do just a bit better than that, Judge. I mean, try this for size. OK, you pick up this girl, Susie, you have a route. Later, some bloke comes on board, uh, hits you, knocks you out cold, steals your clothes, steals your money and ties you up. I mean, maybe this person is even a business associate of Susie's. I mean, to me, it sounds like the classic case of assault and rob. I mean, how much money do you have on you? $200. Oh, a lot of trouble to go there for a couple hundred bucks, isn't it? I mean, you know, we're going to have to talk to this girl, Susie. Do you know if she works in a brothel? We didn't discuss what she does for a living. Oh, right, right. Well, you know, it's sounding like the sort of story you hear in court every day. Someone swears that they know someone exists, only they can't find them. I mean, maybe that's what you've done with this girl, Susie, like, like you've made her up to cover your own ass. You can have it your own way, Judge, but there's still the case of the stolen cruiser to answer for. So why don't you just stew on that for a while? What happens now? Our detectives are continuing to investigate the matter. Yeah, the crime scene are checking for fingerprints. We'll see what they turn up. I don't want to proceed with the matter. I want to protect my family. And I do not want it in the papers. Right, well, just because our detectives are continuing to investigate, it does not mean that it's going to hit the headlines. Fish nets, eh? <laughs> When do I get my boat back? Uh, this afternoon, I think, Grimes. since you'll be finished. We've got a business to run, you yeah, know? Yeah, we understand that. I reckon you blokes forget who the innocent victim is a lot of the time. <laughs> who did you hire the boat to? I didn't hire the bloody thing to anyone. It was stolen. Right, but do you remember a woman called Susie hiring a boat from you at all no, in the no. last few months? I don't think so. No? You know, I'll have to check the record. I saw the guy who took my cruiser. And if his name is Susie, then I'm Captain Bloody Cook. All right, what do you look like? I've already given it to the uniform blokes. Don't you guys talk to each other? Humorous. Yeah, it was, um... Old bloke, 50-ish, uh, brown hair, starting to thin on top. Expensive suit. I saw him wandering around the place, didn't think anything of it. Next thing I know, my cruise is gone. But you didn't actually see him take the boat? There was no one else around that could have done it. Right, well, we'll have a look at those uh, records, OK? Christine's in the office. She'll show them to you. But don't take up too much of her time. Look, we're investigating your stolen boat. Now, it'll take as much time as it takes. It's a jam. I thought I ain't. It doesn't matter whether or not the law says it's all right for a judge to have sex with a prostitute, people are still going to think it's wrong. What people? Who? Oh, I don't know. You, the average what? citizen that lives out there, the average Joe Blow, they don't want to see judges rooting around well, with prostitutes. Why, but it's yeah. not a crime, is it? Crime scene are finished with the cruiser. The fingerprints belong to this woman, Susan Jane Abramovich. She's got a couple of priors, one for possession and the other one for utter false prescription. So her last known address was a brothel in um, Darlinghurst, Arundel Street, I believe. Terrific. Thanks, Helen. Well, 
to take long, just a few questions. Sure. Hey, let's cross the road, eh? Hey, Frank! It's been a while. I know you. <laughs> Come on, Frank. It's not that long ago. Um, look, we're looking for this lady. We believe she works around here. Well, she used to work for me, but uh, not anymore she doesn't. When did you last see her? Susie's moved up in the world. She's running a gig of her own these days. It's a flash joint in Elizabeth Bay. Right, so, uh, is that all? Yeah. Pity. I'll see you, Frank. What's that look for? Interest. Interest. She's an informant. You've got an answer for everything, haven't you? Right? Well, I mean... What are you doing the rest of the days off? How am I supposed to feel? <laughs> May Grid Enterprises Proprietary Limited. It has two company directors. One is Suzanne Abramovich, and the other one is Adrian Madigan, son of Terence. Your eyes made, Frank. Yeah. You coming? Now? Well, why not? They should be out for the night's trading. OK, OK, but that's not making a meal out of it, all right? One, two, three, over there. This must be ticking along all right. Yeah. Oh, well, <clears throat> in the wrong job, eh? <laughs> Jealous. Evans Gage. Yeah, uh, we're detectives uh, Holloway and Goldstein, Sydney Water Police. Want to speak to Miss uh, Abramovich? Okay. Thank you. Susie's busy at the moment. Can I help you? Oh, yeah. Was she busy in here? Look, you can't go in. <laughs> all right, you've made your point. Yeah. Who is it, Lisa? Ah. Can I help you? Miss Abramovich? I'm Detective Holloway. This is Detective Goldstein. Hey. We've got a couple of questions, if you don't mind. And if I do? Do you mind telling us what you've been doing today? I've been here all day. Why? OK. Do you know what the judge... Uh, what have you had dealings with the judge, Charles Morton? Are you suggesting I remember the name of every client who walks through my doors? Look, have you or haven't you? I simply don't know. Well, have you ever been on a cruiser at Sorensen's Marina? No. Oh, that's interesting, because, you see, your fingerprints were found all over one of his boats. Oh, we had a function on a luxury cruiser a few weeks ago. It might have been from there. Oh, yeah? What sort of function? A staff party. Uh-huh. Is your partner here? Who? Adrian Madigan, the other director of Maygrid Enterprises. He's a silent partner. I run the business. Anything else? Yeah, just one thing. Um, who would have organised this staff party? Look, I don't need to tell you anything more about our business. Do you mind? Thank you. Thank you. Can't afford it, mate. Uh. Radio. Yeah, you got that. Thanks, Helen. Have a good night. See ya. What do you know? Adrian Madigan just spent the last 18 months inside and the judge who put him there was Charles Morton. Surprise, surprise. You know, I think our young friend might be holding a grudge. What do you reckon? I reckon that might be true, you know. Pull over. I don't believe it. I just saw the Madigans pull into that pub. Pull over. Yeah, yeah, OK, OK. Adrian Madigan, Detective Holloway, Detective Goldstein, Derry. Oh, well, you uh, heard they're watering down the spirits in this joint. That what you hear about, mate? Oh, well, in that case, you won't mind knocking that back and coming out of the office with us. Wouldn't mind a few words with you. Well, you can have them here. I can have time to stuff around with rubber dinghy, please. Where were you this morning? Do you remember? Oh, I'd say I was at the TAB. Yeah? Yeah, can anyone vouch for that? Oh, about 50 people. Me being one of them. That's so? Yeah, I've been with them all day. Let's go. 18 months inside, now that must have been pretty hard going. If I was a barrel of laughs, considering I didn't do anything in the first place. Do you like getting back at people that do you wrong, Adrian? Is this leading anywhere, Detective Holloway? You keep talking like that, Terry, I'll begin to think you're a solicitor. You know anything about this attack on Judge Morton, do you, Adrian? You know anything about that? No. But nothing. you remember him, don't you? He's already told you he doesn't know what you're talking about. You guys have got nothing on me, and look, I don't have to stand here and take this bullshit, so, um, goodbye. OK, well, um... You have a nice night, you two. I must say, though, it's lovely to see father and son out in the town having such a nice time. Yeah, you look sweet, very sweet. Hope you get lucky. Adrian Mann.
litigants in 18 months for assault occasioning grievous bodily harm. Right, now it's payback time for Charles Morton. Well, if Madigan is the one who roughed Morton up, all Morton has to do is ID him. Yeah, but Willie, I mean, he's not being very cooperative, I tell you. Well, Morton's got nowhere to go on this one. He'll have to give us a statement on the assault and rob, even if we don't charge him with stealing the cruiser. I tell you, you've been a lot more enthusiastic since Madigan's name came up. I'm just friend. saying it's time we went to see the good judge again. Okay, let's go. Okay. My property, um, Mrs. Morton. No, no, I want you to leave. We just want to have a chat Please with your husband, leave. if you might. You are trespassing. Look, it's the police. I'm Detective Rachel Goldstein, Detective Frank Holloway. We just want to have a chat with your husband. We won't take long. There he is now. Look, I'm sorry about this. I'm sorry about this, Judge. We did try to call, but your phone's off the hook. It's a bit late for discretion now, Detective. I walked down to the local news agent today to be confronted. By this. Ah, right. Well, I'm sorry about that. Um, I don't know where they got the story. It certainly wasn't from us. What do you want? Look, we believe you're being set up by a man named Adrian James Madigan. You sent him away about a year ago for assault occasioning GBH. You uh, ever had any threats from this guy? No. The guy that came on the cruiser, the one that hit you, did you get any kind of look at him? Only for a second. Would you recognise him again in an organised lineup? I mean, Judge, you know, I am trying to help. Like, so far, you're the only one that's facing charges. But that sort of threat doesn't mean much anymore. Look, if we get a positive ID, there's a good chance we're going to charge this guy. So we're very keen, you know. Why bother? The damage is done. I no longer have a reputation to protect. Goodbye. Oh, this is bullshit. This is bullshit. They're quoting that guy, um, you know, Ray Sorensen, owner of the cruiser. Mm -hmm. They're saying that the judge stole the cruiser, he had a prostitute on board, and the police are trying to cover it up. Sorensen couldn't know no, any of that. No, couldn't. Mm. I mean, we said that his cruiser had been found. We didn't say anything about Morton or Susie or... It's a jam. Oh, Ray Sorensen's not about. Apparently went out for lunch and hasn't come back. Got mobile? No, I switched off. What have we here? Girl from Susie's joint. Oh, yeah, it is too. Must do more than answer phones, eh? Not the outfit, eh? Lisa! Yes? Here, you can make yourself comfortable, mate. We're old friends of Lisa's parents. Lisa, this is a wonderful initiative you're showing in this great Olympic city. Young girls taking their clients out on the harbour. My uncle's visiting from the country. We're just doing the touristy thing. Oh, yeah. And do all the young girls uh, hire boats from Ray Sorensen and take their uncles out on the harbour? I have no idea what you're talking about. Whose boat is it? Look, I hired a cruiser. Nobody said that was a crime. So why don't you just piss off and leave me alone? Go easy on him, won't you, love? This Ray Sorensen fella's been receiving checks on a regular basis from Magrid Enterprises. What a surprise. Yeah. Well, we can't charge Adrian with hiring a cruiser, can we? No, but it does make Sorensen's claim that his boat was stolen look a bit dodgy, and it all helps to prove the setup of Judge Morton by Adrian Madigan. Oh, you really think there's a brief in this, Frank? It could be. And hauling in Madigan? You know, it's going to help you get uh, Madigan Senior, is it? It just might. Oh, I bet it might. Frank Holloway, yep. Did you see the judge? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Twice in one week. What do I owe the pleasure? Yeah. Joanne Freeman. Oh, yeah, when? I've had trouble with her before, you know. I'm going to yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> what do you know? Terry Madigan wants me to go over to his place, have a bit of a chat. It's obvious he thinks young Adrian's got in over his head. All right, and he thinks you're just the bloke who can fix it. Assuming you turn up. Oh, that's a given, Jeff. Madigan wants me to help him out. Now, with a bit of luck, he'll drop his son in it and give us the brief. That's the brief we don't have without Judge Morton's statement. Why is Madigan doing this, eh? He knows you're desperate to get something on him. I mean, it, really, it doesn't make sense. What are you saying? You're to set up? Yeah, well, maybe it is. Hey, it's Madigan's son we're talking about, Rachel. I mean, tugging at the emotional heartstrings can cloud even a smart crook's judgment. Oh, well, you'd know about clouded judgment, wouldn't you? Yeah. 8.30 tonight, I'll be at Madigan's place. <laughs> Frank, you're not going anywhere until you've informed internal affairs. OK, I'm going to get on to uh, Tony Brady at IA. Hi, your old mate. That'll be good. Darren. Hello. Where's Brady? On leave. Well-deserved break, I'd say. Oh, yeah? When's he back? Too long for us to hold over this little operation of yours. Although I can't quite understand the emergency. Terry Madigan's not going anywhere. That's the sort of attitude that always gets you blokes results. <laughs> Madigan's no petty crim. 
If what you're suggesting is true, he knows exactly what he's playing at. Just a straightforward chat between old friends, nothing to worry about. I mean, I'm going to play it by the book. Hey, Terry, you must cop a whack of land tax. I manage. You know, I wouldn't mind a bit of a view myself. Well, you should get yourself one then. Yeah, that'll be the day. Now, you'll generally find, Frank, that if you can get the deposit together, the banks will come up with the rest. Even for a copper. <laughs> All right. You know, uh, Big Bobby McKenzie over at Homicide? Oh, yeah. Run into him a few times. Well, he had his eye on this little place over at Coogee a few years ago. All he needed was 50 grand. And I'll bet he'd come up with it. He did. Mick O'Neill from Fraudies. Mm -hmm. He had to come up with a similar sort of deposit too. You don't say. Hmm. You stay right there. Don't move. Now, there are plenty of places with a view in there, so maybe you should start having a look. You know, just maybe I should. For me, it's a very big decision. I mean, I sort of, uh, you know, it'd be the sort of step I'd really want to take. Of course. I might want a bigger deposit than I first imagined. I'll be interested to know what you decide. <laughs> you know, as much as I find real estate fascinating, Terry, mm -hmm. let's cut the crap. Well, I, I think my boy got a... A bit of a scare last night. Not so you'd notice? No, he's worried, though. He doesn't want to go back inside. He doesn't like it at all. Yeah, I can understand that. Do you mind, Bob? Please. But I'm sure you explained to him that it's just a necessary part of uh, his education and joining the family business. Don't you try to get at me through my son, Holloway. Terry, you know I don't play favourites. Yeah, but I do, with the right people. If what he says is Dinkum, the trail of financial records for O'Neill and Mackenzie should lead me back to Madigan. If? And what if he's lying to you, setting you up? Nah, he trusts me. You see, the way he sees it, I'm his ticket to his son's protection. Madigan's a pretty smart operator. I think the contents of the conversation are ambiguous, to say the least. Not to me, they're not. I know about you, Holloway. You've been waiting a long time to get something on Madigan. Yeah, about as long as you blokes have been waiting to get something on me. Just leave him and the bent cops to us. Get the statement from Judge Morton and you'll have Adrian Madigan. You make it sound so simple, Darren. About something as simple you blokes from IA could do. Can't see anyone. Try around the. Hang on. Is that a car? Yeah. Down here. Here we go. Oh, oh dear. Oh, now I'll get the sound. <laughs> Morton's dead. Yeah, he was a halfway decent bloke, too. Yeah, lucky you didn't have your heart set on that bribe, Frank. Reckon there'd be no need for it now. OK, you checked out O'Neill and Mackenzie? I have. And? There's no evidence either of them received payments from Madigan. You kidding? We've executed search warrants on their bank statements. They're clean. And the house in Coogee Mackenzie is supposed to have? It doesn't exist. He was definitely having a Lindia. He offered me a bribe. He never offered you anything like that, Frank. You're kidding if you think there's a brief in this. Look, you know as well as I do what that conversation was about. It's Pat, Frank. The DPP won't run with it. Can I have the car keys? No, I'm driving. I'm driving, OK? Remember where we put it? Oh, 
see a mangrove? Someone else with your ramblings, Holloway. I'm trying to enjoy a beer with the young bloke. You're not going to win with me, Terry. Yeah, the same could be said for you, Frank. Anyway, it's all subjective. Now, it's a terrible thing to hear about young coppers who have been on the take. It sort of shatters the whole good guy illusion. You should be careful who you mix with in our game. Know what I mean? They can be your best friend one minute, your worst enemy the next. See you, Adrian. You look after yourself, eh? Down on Ready? Okay, let's see what we got. Better give Dave a call, huh? Yep. What the hell are we looking for? Buggy, if I know. Guess we'll know it when we find it. Could have been some girl dropping a bag out of the ferry. You think? A falafel roll or something. Okay, thanks. Got it. Might have to put it off. There's a body being found at Rose Bay. Handbag and wallet. Name's Lisa Hubbard. I think you've met. Well, no good. visible wound. Yeah, substantial bruising to the neck. Has she been strangled? Yeah, very good chance. Yeah. Let's get a shot of this one. Come on, fellas. Just be careful. I wonder where Uncle is now. Dead girl um, boarding one of Ray Sorensen's cruisers yesterday afternoon with the client. Apparently the client dropped the key back about eight. No sign of Lisa. No one else in the marina saw anything unusual. Well, the client's the bloke we need to talk to. Yeah. I'm guessing he didn't leave his personal details with the brothel. No, he didn't, but he did use his Amex card. So we've got an RC Holland. Um, Blake Moore's looking it up now. Right. Yeah, I reckon it's got to be a link with the Morton case. 
And they're for the Madigans? Well, I'm just keeping an open mind, Jeff. I found our client, yep. Richard Charles Holland. Address me. Okay. Okay. Yep. We got back to the marina about, uh, oh, I don't know, eight ish. I asked the young lady if she wanted a lift anywhere, but she said no, she was meeting someone. Ah, oh, did she say who? I didn't ask. I assumed it was another client. Right. Well, what happened then? Well, she asked me if I could hand in the keys to the office. And when I came back out, I saw her getting into a car. What sort of car was that? A blue Mercedes. Right, did you see the uh, driver or no. the Rego? Well, no, I wouldn't. Right, did you see anyone in the car at all? I'm sorry, I wasn't taking that much notice. Look, my wife. If she ever got to know... Um, have you seen Lisa on previous occasions? Look, Detective, this isn't something I make a habit of. Thank you. Of course, he was most worried about his wife finding out. Rachel just had a call from a Susie. She wouldn't give her last name. She said you know who she was. Yep. She wants you to meet her at the deserted boat shed at White Bay. And she said she'd only chat to the woman. What did I do wrong? See ya. Take care. Susie? Oh, we tried to contact you this morning. Did you get the message? Oh, what happened to you? Adrian did it. He threw me out. Jeez, he didn't hold back, did he? Yeah. I got a easy, don't worry. Better than poor Lisa. You heard about Lisa? You know about that? Adrian killed her. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Right, you were a witness? Yeah, that's a witness. Right, you're gonna make a statement? Yeah. Okay. Let's go outside, eh? Adrian was so pissed off with me when he found out that the judge who put him away had become a bit of a regular. Right, yeah. Then he realised it was a great way to get back at him. He reckoned it'd be too easy. The whole thing would have gone off perfectly, except I stuffed up by leaving fingerprints. Ah, oh, the fingerprints, yeah. Is that what happened? Lisa stuffed up? Is that why she, uh, she got done? He said if she's been talking to the cops, I'll kill the bitch. Right, how'd he find out? He got a call from Ray Sorensen, the bloke who yeah, hires yeah, us the bruises. Yeah, Ray Sorensen. Apparently he wasn't around that day. Yeah, well, Ray said he'd seen Lisa talking to you guys. Yeah, yeah, right. So what happened next? Well, I, um, I followed him to the marina and... When I got there, neither of them were in sight, so I ran down to have a look on one of the cruisers. I could hear Lisa screaming, Adrian yelling at her. Mm. It's so violent when he's angry. Uh, where was Lisa's client at this point? I don't know. I don't um, know, there was no one else at the marina? No. Did you go onto the boat? No, I couldn't, I was... Right, so you only heard it, you didn't see anything? OK, let's, um, the car's just here, let's go, OK. Look, you know, Susie, she's not the most reliable witness in the world. You know that, don't you? All we want to do is talk to the young man, see what he has to say for himself. Registration SJA757 along Gay Street. Uh, defending vehicles doing about 100 k's over.
cocaine there. Yeah. I'll call it in, eh? I'm not going in there. Oh, no. Mr. Holland would like to see you. Uh, Mr. Holland, you want to talk to us? I consulted my solicitor. He told me it would be better if I came forward and cooperated. Yeah? You've got to believe me. I didn't mean for it to happen. What to happen, sir? The young girl, Lisa. Mm hmm It was me. I, I just panicked. I should have told you the truth from the start. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. You fought, you fought with her and grabbed no, her and... No. You, just, you just tell us what happened, huh? I had my hands round her neck. She used to let me do that. It's been fine in the past. Actually, she, she never minded it. I didn't mean to kill her. She just, um... Inside with us, okay? We'll give you a cup of tea. You heard about Adrian? Now, we just had a fella in here. He was a client of yours. Yeah, he confessed to killing Lisa Hubbard. Apparently, they're having sex. Things got a bit out of hand. So, we're going to charge you with making false accusations. Oh, great. Is that the thanks I get? In bloody oath, that's the thanks you get. You dicked us around well and truly. Look, I know you're on a good behaviour, Bond, but with a bit of luck, you'll go in the bin. So, why'd you do it? What do you reckon? He was an arsehole. Look, I was sick and tired of him throwing his weight around. He was bashing me, he was building my girls up. He was bad for business. No, so you thought we'd put him away for you, did you? You did. Yeah, we did. Listen, I was doing you a favour. No, you were looking after your own selfish ass. Now go on, get out of our sight. Oh, I didn't want him bloody dead. Can I give you a lift? Oh, here we go. Here we go. You killed my boy. No. He did it to himself. You watch yourself, Holloway. I can't give you that lift, can we just go? Honest, thanks. I'm fine. Look, you know, don't worry yourself, you know. What you said was the truth. It's. Yeah, yeah, it was true, all right, but. You know, it just doesn't make you feel any better, does it? Look, I'll go. Take care, I'll see you. Yeah, you too.